name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen father we thank you this evening for bringing all of us together once again lord it's a great journey that we that you are taking us through a journey where you are allowing us to discover more of you lord your word says in jeremiah 29 13 if you seek me you will find me if you you seek me with all your heart today thank you lord for giving us that wisdom to seek you not just uh, uh, partially or half heartedly but seek you with all our hearts lord you told your people lord israel it's in in deuteronomy and exodus that you are the god who delivered them from the slavery in egypt and there shall be no other god apart from you today lord we declare in our hearts in our minds in our spirit that you alone are the god whom we worship and you alone our god and master you alone are a god whom we trust and it is in you we have our salvation lord we thank you for giving us this understanding for opening our minds our hearts to your spirit thank you lord jesus we praise you lord jesus we worship you lord jesus hallelujah thank you master thank you lord thank you lord amen amen over to you brother praise god praise god so, so we were studying about uh the son making the decision and preparing himself before saying and meeting the father so he is making the preparation and saying that father has sinned against you yes praise god praise god so here begins the uh, his um, his preparation yeah okay so the first thing he experiences is when he then when he makes that decision the father is waiting for him yeah okay and this is the picture that jesus is giving about the love of the heavenly father that he knows that his children have gone away so he's not with a gun to fire them but he's there with his love to forgive them yeah so the first thing is he, jesus is sharing about the father is the fathers is a full of mercy and compassion yes so we see the first point is that his father is able to see the son with the eyes of mercy and that is why the bible says the first thing when he was a great way far off the father saw him so yeah. when the father saw him he did not he did not get boiling hot in fact he was excited because his son is coming back yeah so before anybody in the family could be aware of him the father saw him because the father had been waiting for the son's return praise god yeah, praise so god. it is the father's desire for of the of that every son be converted from sinner to righteousness yeah and it is the father's readiness to meet his son who is only made a decision to come back home yeah so the father looks on the person he looks on men with compassion because he understands that this person who has gone astray from him okay he is also longing that i give him the freedom to go so that he learns from his mistake mm. and returns back to me mm. he begins to discover the life on the other side which looks to be glittering can keep you deep into the uh, can take you deeper and deeper into slavery where all your life you will be working in that country because you cannot leave the country without repaying your loan Mm. plus the interest is going to go on increasing so in other words this is a very good way of keeping these people working for us so that we keep them on the task yeah 
So the second one is the mercy. So it is the mercy of God that helps us to turn to God. Mm. If it is not the mercy, then it would be uh, God's judgment on me that I would run away from God. Mm. But because of his mercy, okay, uh, he has compassion. Yeah. So he looks at the sinner mm. with compassion. Yeah. And it is the father whose soul is so much rejoicing because his soul was uh, grieved because mm. of the son's wrong decision. Mm. Because he already knows that the son who is taking the journey mm. is going to face terrible moments till he realizes and comes back home. Mm. Yeah. The third yeah. one is he sees the feet of mercy. Mm. First is he saw. Second one is the bowels of mercy. The yeah. third one is the feet of mercy because the father ran, right? Yes. So God is so much full of mercy that ah. when the prodigal son came slowly under the burden of shame and fear but the, but the compassion of the father for the compassionate father ran to meet the son with his encouragements. Mm. Praise God. Praise that is the picture that Jesus is giving about his father. Yeah. And when he ran towards him, the first thing he did was he spread his arms around his son and accepted him. Yeah. So you have the arms of mercy. Yeah. Those arms stretch to embrace his son. And that's what the Bible says. He fell on his neck. Yeah. Though, though the son is guilty mm. and deserves to be punished, okay, to be beaten up, though dirty, okay, and he has come from feeding the swine and he's stinking, but the father with his compassion and, and tenderness is, is so much filled with the love for his son that he does not think about whether he should touch his son or not. He's just running to put his arms around him and lay in his bosom mm. and to make him comfortable to tell him that I, your father, love you the way you are, not based on your performance. Mm. Because through your performance, I should have been irritated and should have given you a piece of my mind. But because I love you, I continue to love you the way you are. Mm. Praise God. And then comes the, then he experiences the fifth one is the lips of mercy where the father is opening his mouth. Okay. Mm. And the Bible says the father kissed his son. Yeah. Now, now the kiss was to tell him that welcome back into the family. Mm. Praise God. Praise the God. kiss was a seal of his pardon. Mm. So all foolish uh, decisions of your past is completely forgiven right now. Yes. And never mentioned against you in the future. Mm -hmm. Praise yeah. God. Praise God. So you see how much the father loves each one of us. Yes. He is the one who is all the time ready and he is the one who is all the time free yeah. to set yeah. us free yeah. from yeah. sin and death. Yeah. So Jesus is the one who receives us and he is the one who entertains poor sinner or repentant sinner to come back yeah. and to feed him according to the Father's will. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what is his next next step? He yeah. said to his father, I have sinned. Oh. Yes. So, so here, is, here in the verse 21, in the verse 21, he says that. 
that the father's kindness has affected him. So now he opens his mouth and confesses all that he has prepared. Yeah. He expresses after his father's after his father has shown him so much of kindness. Yeah. So also when I'm going for confession, the father is already waiting for me over there in that confession. Yeah. So just as the son received the kiss which sealed his pardon, the father is saying that I have accepted you yeah. and I have forgiven you yeah. and I have made you comfortable yeah. so that your heart which is now um, broken yeah. and has changed from a hardened heart mm. to a heart of love mm. so the father is is not only forgiving him but is blessing him praise god praise god so just as nathan came and told david you see that the lord has taken away thy sin that you shall not die yes so, so the lord is compassionate so much compassionate that according to the sin if god has to deal with us he would have all been in trouble. Yes. So, because of his compassion, he forgives us of our sins. Yeah. Now, the question is, when we go for confession, can you remember every one of your sins? We can't every time, no. Not really. So, even if you can't remember all your sin, but the Father sees your heart, that how much you long to forgive, he still says, okay, all your sins are forgiven. Mm. That is which what you remembered, which you remembered and which you could not remember. Yes, that is what we say, no? Whatever we remember and what we do not do not remember. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. And as I told you, the prophet Nathan said that you know, it is the Lord who has taken away your sin, and therefore you shall not die. Mm. if God has not to take away the sin the same David who is uh, in spite of being the king his life would have been miserable yeah so the, the forgiveness of God's uh, with the forgiving heart okay should increase the sorrow in that uh, repentant sinner that how much the father longs to be with his son and how much he has missed his son. Yeah. So, when we come to the father, he is, he is more than ready to forgive us the most difficult one. Mm. And uh, what is very important is when the sinner is coming back home, the father is forgiven him. But the question is, has he forgiven himself? Hmm. Yeah, that is a question. So that, if he has not forgiven himself, he will be still in the devil's kingdom with guilt and shame. Hmm. And also condemnation. Hmm. So that is one big, uh, big uh, you know, uh, problem with a lot of us. Yes. Of not able to forgive, uh, you know. Yes. So then, then, then that person remains with a sin consciousness and he's found himself with guilt and condemnation. Instead of going further, mm. he is a prisoner in his own thinking. Mm. Yeah. So what the devil does, he keeps accusing that person that you have sinned, you have sinned, you have sinned, you have sinned. And in the, even though the person has experienced forgiveness, but the devil keeps barking at that person, but that person can't handle it. Yeah. And that's why it is so important that you get into the teaching so that you will be on the right track. Mm. Yeah. And then you will be able to forgive yourself. Yes. So, what, what what do you say after that? 
what do you say about the father after that he calls uh, the servants and uh, asks them to cut beef and uh, you know make dance and uh, have a party <laughs> Yeah. So to celebrate, just put that verse twenty-one, Baba. Marita, are you there? Luke, Luke fifteen, twenty-one. Okay. Is Baba in there? In there. Hey, put put the mute. Put the mute. So much of noise in the class. <laughs> yeah, once in a while, let them make the noise. It will wake you. It will wake you up from the sleep. So you know, brother. Every day the timing is. It by the time I reach five o'clock, I have done the whole night. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then in the morning, and then again it goes till nine o'clock, and then again twelve o'clock you start again. Right up to five, four o'clock, four four thirty. So it is like most of the time you are awake. Mm. So in that you are preaching. Now to the this Konkani session also, I I am press. I am trying my best to speak. Mm. But but praise God, whatever we get, the Lord still gives us the best, right? Yeah. Verse twenty one. and the son said said unto him one more one more she'll make it big yeah father i have sinned against heaven and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son so father father you want me to read a further no 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 but did you did you realize something there is some problem here Yeah, I am not worthy to be called thy son. Is that all? And son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and no more worthy to be called thy son. Yes. What is missing? Missing me. Sinned against heaven. Now something you have missed. Give me as one of your servants. Ah! <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He has cancelled that. In his when he is making a decision to go back home, ah. what is he saying? I am not worthy to be your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Yeah. Correct, correct. So, so do you think he must have forgotten about it? No. He decided. Has, has he changed his mind? so this is a kind of uh, moving from uh, you know a uh, self pity self pity to a you know a consciousness that you are the son of the father if he had said then he would have been in the self pity stage right no 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 the treatment that the father has given his son yeah okay of showing so much of abundance of love and mercy the father the son changed his mind okay and he only said that i sin against you and heaven praise god praise god that's a good because, uh... because the father's willingness wow. of his love was enough to change him change his mind into thinking of that yeah praise god praise god so when we come back to the father Okay, do we have the same kind of thinking? Yeah, we don't have all the time. <clears throat> we don't have all the time. But see, the word twenty-two starts with but. Hmm. See, when the when the son says, "I'm not even any more worthy hmm. to be called your son," the father says the word but. Yeah. What is that? But but is uh, 
<laughs> have you ever have you, have you ever used the word but in your life? Of course. So when do you use the word but? But is if you have another uh, option. So what is the meaning of that? No, you what you said is uh, fine, but that is not acceptable to me. That is not no matter. When we don't agree. Don't agree. Okay. In simple English, it is like this. Whatever you have said before the but is not what you believe. Whatever you say after the but is what you believe. Ah. Simple. So when the, you remember those 12, 12 spies came yeah. and they were talking to Moses and the people of Israel. Yeah. They all, they all agreed that there were giants on the other side. Mm. Okay. So they were saying the giants are so powerful and this and that. Caleb said, but we can go now and take over the land. Yeah. So when Caleb said that, they said, but the giants are not only big in size, they even eat up people. Again, Caleb is saying, but we can take over the land. Yeah. So, so every time there is an argument, there is a statement called but. Mm. So when the son said, I am not even worthy to be called your son, the father used the word but. And he said, you should never again talk of your unworthiness. Mm. Because I am the one who have, with my whole heart, welcomed you. Mm. But listen, though you are not worthy to be called a son, but I treat you, and I continue to treat you as my dear son, as my blessed son, not based on your your performance, but based on my love. Mm. So even today, God looks at us, not based on our performance, but he looks at us through the finished works of Jesus on the cross. Mm. So most of the time we have a relationship with the Father or with Jesus based on our feelings and emotions and our step of action. Yeah. But when you come to the Lord, you should remember His mercy is new each morning mm. and through His mercy He accepts us, He loves us, He cares for us and He also is looking for a great future. Yes. Now I'll give you an example, okay? So that you'll understand what I'm saying. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. And this, this, happened, this happened is uh, my father had has a wedding hall in Bombay. Mm. Okay. So I used to be a workaholic. Mm. Okay. So being a workaholic, you know, you can work and work and work. But when I received Jesus, I stopped going to that place. Mm. And I started going into full time and all that. So my father was worried because I'm not coming for family business. Mm. Even in my own business, up to morning I used to be there. From afternoon I'm going. And when I would go to meet him, he would say, tell me how much salary do you get? in doing what you're doing. I said, I don't get salary. So where do you get the income? I said, I don't get the income. Then why are you going? Mm. I said, because I am enjoying the moment in doing that. Mm. So every month, my dad used to give me a share, a portion from the profit. Okay. So he began to say, see, it would not be fair from my side that your brother comes and works. Okay. But you don't even come even once to work. And I have to give you the share. It is very, very, uh, you know, uncomfortable for me. So you better start coming. So I said, well, Dad, I don't want the share, but I will go and do the Lord's work. So three months over, fourth month now, my dad called me and said, Baba, I'm getting sleepless nights. 
I said, what happened, Dad? Are you, is, is your health okay? Saying, not, not my health, Re Baba. I have got my grandchildren. You are foolish. You don't want to work. Neither are you looking after your own business. You are going after that God, God. And God only knows how are you maintaining your children. So I have decided to give you the share. Not for you, for my grandchildren. Okay. So he gave me the cash. Okay. And he said, see that you take it home and not use it for your ministry work. And I'm going to call up Janice, that's my wife, to ask whether he has brought the money home. So he gave me the money, quite a big amount. And I'm on my bike, very happy. And as I'm going, the Lord is saying, your father is not a just father. So I said, why is my father not a just father? He said, there were so many workers who were there. None of them got the amount that you got. Yeah. Okay. And you did not even come to work. Mm. Then how come your father gave you the money and they who came to work they did not even get that amount. They got very small amount compared to it. So is your father a just father or an unjust father? So I said it is very simple. They got salary. Mm. I as a son, I don't get salary. I get my inheritance. And that's the time the father said to me, the Holy Spirit said to me, the day you understand your relationship in the family of God, that you are not called to be a servant, you are called to be a son, you will always enjoy inheritance coming from heaven. But if you believe you are a servant, you will always wait for salary. Oh, that's a beautiful uh, explanation. Yes. So from that day on, I began to realize that because I am the son, I don't work hard to get from heaven because I get from heaven because of my identity in Christ who through him I have been adopted in the family and yeah. therefore I get everything from heaven as an inheritance not with my sweating. Wow, that's beautiful. So who are you brother? A son or a hired servant? I am a son. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. See, see my uh... DP picture, son of a king. Oh, oh, son of a kingdom. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, just putting that ID doesn't mean that you are actually believing, huh? At least I have started. Because, 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 because on that also, on that also, there is a story going on. Uh, there was, because all these things, no, are examples how the Lord began to help me to okay. understand. Okay. There was this uh, car going on our road mm. and the signal in front was green mm. suddenly it became yellow mm. and the person in front was going at a good speed mm. so the second car decided that he will go and I'll also pass through it that fellow suddenly put brakes which he could have passed through mm. he put the brakes and this one was not uh, okay. you know prepared. prepared for it so the, the car went into a big son and, and, and it was nearly touching, okay? Did not touch. Mm. So the car behind, mm. the driver was so annoyed, began to honk, began to show some finger uh, language and all that, okay? And the signal started. And the car just moved out of the signal post. The police car came from behind mm. and took him at the side and said, please stop the car. Which bitch is okay. the front? Car in the front or the second, second one, second one, because second one was honking, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And did not ask anything. Nothing. Did not ask license or anything. Just asked the driver to come out. Arrested the driver and put the driver in the prison. Hmm. Now, does that driver deserve this treatment, brother? No. So after one hour, the same cop came. Mm. By now, this lady in the prison has made everybody's life awoke. Mm. Because she has been not questioned, just put in the prison. 
So after one hour, he comes, the same cop, and pleads for forgiveness mm. from this lady. Mm. Why is the cop asking for forgiveness? Because he felt uh, he did a mistake. She, he did a mistake. Or... Because he, he, he misunderstood her identity. He did not know who she is. So he said, please forgive me. I misunderstood your identity. Mm. So the woman said, yes, you better be made this thing. He said, it's not my mistake. See, your car is full of stickers. Jesus loves, Jesus cares, Jesus forgives, Jesus this, Jesus that. There's a rosary in front, everything. Now, a person who has put all those stickers loves Jesus so much. Will that person begin to give all these bad words? If this is your car and you are the owner and you have put all those stickers, will you ever abuse like this? No. No. So I, without, without a doubt, I knew that this person has robbed the car. Mm. Looking at the fruit because it did not match the sticker, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I did not even have to ask for the license because yeah. when I found the fruit, I yeah. said, this is a stolen car. So I put you out. But when I went and checked the license and with your driving license, I came to know it is your car. Uh -huh. So it was your sticker that deceived me your identity. Uh -huh. so if you put sticker and rosary, you better be careful what you're doing in the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially in Bangalore with the traffic honking. Yes, yes. <laughs> Correct. So do we have a misidentity? Uh, uh, identity? Yes. So the father is telling the son, I know your identity is based on your work, mm. okay? That you are feeling guilty, mm. okay? But I want to tell you, mm. your identity is not based on what you did. Mm. Your identity is based on what I did for you is to forgive you in spite of you blowing up all that in sin and all this. My mercy to you is that when I cleaned you, I cleaned you thoroughly and beautifully that there is no, no, no mark of any sin in you. And therefore, the Lord calls us justified. Yeah. You know what is justified, brother? Yes, justified. Yeah, tell me what is justified. Justified is uh, what your action has no uh, further reaction or act. Yeah, whatever you did is okay. You are forgiven. What? Whatever you have done is okay. Brother from <laughs> 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 Somebody wrote to me saying that found not guilty. Is that justified? Yeah, found not guilty. But how, how do you become found not guilty? That means he's not a just God. Yeah. I explained it before. You forgot it. And you know, brother, yeah. Jews, yeah. every day you got to remember every moment that you are justified by faith. Mm. Means what? Because Jesus has paid the price for you on the cross, mm. okay, every one of your sin has been paid in full. For the same crime, you mm. cannot be punished the second time. Mm. So Jesus is giving us yeah. the receipt mm. of his payment for every sin yeah. that he has taken the punishment. Yeah. So now when you stand before the 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 court, mm. okay, and the judge is asking, have you committed this crime? What do you say? Uh, yes. yes. I have committed. Yeah, that you have told. Revelation. Uh, revelation. That witness. Yeah. So, so through that, yeah. you are justified, brother. Yes. And that is why the father wants the son to remember he was unworthy by his action. Yeah. But by the action of Jesus, he has been made worthy yeah. Even though he doesn't deserve it, and that is called as mercy. Correct, correct, yes. So when you go for confession and you come back, you are not coming back with unworthiness. Yeah. You are coming back yeah. with worthiness. And yeah. because you are worthy, now you are made into the righteousness of God. Yeah. And unless you believe you are the righteousness of God, you cannot uh, reign in this world. You will, otherwise, you will live a losing life battle. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. You know, you can live as a king in this world victorious. Yes. Because of the gift of righteousness. Yes. Are you selling something or you're doing something? I'm just writing down. Okay. Give me Romans chapter 5, verse number 15. I want to show you this. Hmm. That when a person confesses, and if he doesn't believe this, he can still live a losing battle. Okay. What is that word? Romans? 15. 515, I think. Let me see. Yes, 515. But not as the offense. No, no, 17, 17, 517. Yes. Shall reign in life. Yes. For if by yes. one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Just give me the RSV, Baba. If because of one... No, 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 70, 70, yeah. yeah. If because of the one man's trespass... Pause, 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 pause. Yeah. What's the difference between sin and trespass? It's, it's the same. No. Because uh, we use uh, the same word in uh, our Father in Heaven prayer also. Yeah, we are using trespass. We don't use the word sin. Trespass means usurper. Huh? So trying to usurp somebody else's thing. Trespass. Oh, you are trespassing somebody's property? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That... Anything, yeah. So, so what is trespass? See, Try when Adam that. and Eve, when Adam and Eve made a mistake, it was sin. Yes. Then receiving the sin nature, they lost God's nature. After that, whatever they made the sin or they disobeyed was knowing it. The first time they did not know. But after that, the sin was committed willfully knowing it. And that is called a trespass. Oh, first time, so, first time they didn't know. The second time, they were willfully committing. Okay. After, the, after, the, after that, they got a sin nature in them, right? Yeah. So with the sin nature... They became a rebel against God. Mm. And that is what is that you know the law and still you go and break the law is trespassing. When you did not know and you broke, it is sin. Okay. So Okay, I'll give I'll give you a classic example of three things. Mm. Sin, the effect of sin is shame. Mm. which is called as guilt mm. and because of guilt okay comes condemnation mm. okay now when when david was on the rooftop okay mm. when it was the season for them to go for war mm. david has not gone for war is is at home yeah is of is not on duty he should have been on duty yeah and that's where he sees betsiba having bath yeah so the desire has come to him to commit adultery. Yeah. That is sin. Yeah. After committing adultery is guilty. So in his guilty, he wants the husband to go back home. Yeah. Okay. Because she is pregnant. Yeah. So he wants the husband to go back home. The yeah. husband doesn't go back home. Then he tries his best. Then willfully he plans to kill a husband that is trespassing yeah so when nathan comes and explains to him what he has done which he has done in hiding and exposes him that's the time david breaks down and asks forgiveness for sin iniquity and trespassing yeah so 
if one man's trespass, that is, uh, Eve made a blunder, okay, in spite of knowing Eve making a blunder, Adam trespassed. Mm. So one man's trespass, what happened? Death exercised dominion through that one. So God never, never designed or God never created man to die. Mm. He created man to live forever. Mm. Okay? But because of man's trespasses, mm. death came into man and, and uh, with death came sorrow, sickness, disease, all that poverty, uh, uh, pain, everything came. Now, much more surely, can you see that much more? Yeah, much more surely. Now, now what is much more surely? That is uh, definite. See, when we were small, yeah. we used to have, when we were small, we used to have a weighing scale where it used to be like this balancing. Correct. Not the electronic one. Yes. So if you wanted one kg or something, you would put that one kg uh, weight on one side and the vegetable on the other side. Yeah. And then it would balance. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. when you would put the weight, the scale would be like this, one on top, the other one right at the bottom. Yeah. So when sin affected man, man was at the bottom, Satan was right on the top. Mm. Yeah. So when Jesus came to this planet Earth, he did not come to balance the scale. Mm. He began to turn the scale on the other side where Satan is right down and you are right on top. Mm. Okay. Through Christ, that now Satan is under your feet. Now, I want you to imagine the same Satan who was controlling you is now under submission to you in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. Now, I, do I deserve that? No. I because, don't. because of my disobedience, I, I should have been along with Satan under the Lord's feet. Yeah. But what did the Lord do? He did it in such a way on the cross that through his sacrifice, he justified us Sin was destroyed. Sin nature was destroyed. And now we who don't deserve grace through the mercy of God, we are now offered abundance of grace. Yeah. Now remember, grace is only given to those who are disqualified. Grace is never given to those who are qualified. Correct. So through Christ now, the prodigal son, okay, the example what Jesus is giving is, we are the prodigals so through Jesus, now the Father has flooded our life with richness of grace. Mm. And this grace is multiplied and multiplied and multiplied where God is willing to use his power on my behalf, even though I don't deserve it. Yeah. So grace empowers me. Mm. Okay. And the free gift of righteousness. The free gift of righteousness means I have been washed so thoroughly by the blood of Jesus, that when I stand before God, he cannot see even a trace of sin in me because the blood of Jesus has cleansed me and now I have a right standing with God one and I have the very nature of God planted in me. So I've got the nature of God in me. I've got the grace of God in me. Now using these two, I am having much more surely dominion over every work of Satan and through that dominion in life, I win, I, I live a victorious life through one man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So when you go for confession yeah. and you come back and if you don't understand verse number 17, you still live a miserable life. Yes. Give me Isaiah 60 and 10, Baba. Is it making now interesting? Yes, yes. Or are you a miserable sinner? I am not a miserable sinner. We were miserable, but because of what Jesus did, he cleansed us and made us righteous. Now, look at that verse 10, brother. 
I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. You, you, better, you better go slowly. I'm going to ask yeah, you too many questions. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Okay. My whole being shall exult in my God. Okay. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Okay. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Okay. And as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Now, why? Now, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Right. But why here he is saying greatly rejoice? Greatly rejoice. Uh, what what is the previous verse? Is there any connection to okay, that? Okay, okay, okay. Give me the previous verse, Baba. Okay. Yeah. Their descend their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom Lord has blessed. Yeah. So that okay, is the but, but, I greatly rejoicing. Hey, no, 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 no. The rejoicing is in verse number 10. No, so because of this, their descendants shall be known among the nations. as people. Correct, but, but still, the rejoicing is in verse number 10. I gave you the answer. Hmm. What is that? Did I miss? Can anyone else contribute? <laughs> call, call, call Jude. Call both the Judes. Yeah. Jude's. And this is, and, and let me tell you, brother, ah. every confession you go, verse number 10 gets activated. Oh. Jude, Fernandez, Jude, Chennai. Yeah, we made righteous. righteousness. By the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Huh? We are made righteous and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Okay. So? Robe of righteousness. So, covered me with the robe of righteousness. Correct, correct. Your answer is right. So, what is so special about the robe of righteousness? The he answer is correct. He has clothed me. The okay. Robe. Okay. Can the I share? robe of righteousness. Yes, brother. Okay. Now, all you ladies, okay, especially in a country like Europe and US, where there is winter, very, very severe in winter, do they wear clothes? And on top of the clothes, they do they wear a rope? Yes. Or do they wear the rope? And on top of the rope, they wear the clothes? No, they wear other the way around. Yeah, rope after clothes. Other now, way now, you, now, you see what he's saying. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being will shall exalt in my God. Why? Because he, not I. Brother, look at that. He, not I, not I. He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. So garments of salvation means total healing, total deliverance, total prosperity, mm. total joy, mm. total peace, huh? mm. total good? protection, mm. total preservation, total life, eternal life. The whole package is called as salvation. Yeah. Now, this package of salvation is the outer garment or undergarment? Or inner garment? This is... Uh... Inner, inner garment. Inner garment. Inner garment. So what is the outer garment? The robe of righteousness. Now, even if you have worn the garment of salvation and the devil accuses you ah. of your wrongdoing, then you can still qualify to go to hell. How, how, but, 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 listen, but, ah. the moment you are covered with the rope of righteousness. Mm. The rope of righteousness washes you from every sin because Jesus was made to be sin for your sake. So the sin nature 
has been put into Jesus and Jesus' uh, nature of God is removed and put into you. And therefore, the Father is the one who ropes us, who has clothed us, or he is the one who has covered me with the rope of righteousness so that when every time Satan accuses me of any wrongdoing, okay, the rope of righteousness does not allow that arrow to touch me. Why? Because I got righteousness not by my works of the law. I got the righteousness as a gift from God because Christ in me fulfilled the law for me. Mm. So, uh, this uh, garment of salvation is also Jesus, right? Yeah. The, see, there are two. Okay. I do not understand. Now, it. Now, 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 when a person is getting clothed, yeah. do they wear in the, over here? They always wear a overcoat. This is not practiced in India because we have got in India, if you wear a rope and go in Chennai, what will happen, brother? You don't have to take <laughs> bath also. Yeah. You'll get <laughs> bath under the rope. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I did not understand what you said uh, of uh, that, you know, you, the, the devil can still, you know, un attack. Okay, 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 okay. okay. That. Uh, give it 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Read. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin. Pause, pause, pause. Yeah. Have you heard the word sin? Yes. Have you heard the word sins? Yes. So what's the difference between the two? Sin, uh, oh, I forgot brother, you had, I knew that sin is the devil, no? Sin. So God, <laughs> God made Jesus to be devil? No, I don't know. I mean, I, I knew that I forgot. Tell me brother. <laughs> okay, okay, listen. Ah, he did sin, not commit sin. Ah, sin was put on him. He did not commit yeah, sin. Yeah, yeah, but what is the difference between sin and sins? Uh, no, no, no. All the sins put together. There is sin, the single word. Okay, sin okay, okay. Sin let me put it. Let me ask humanity. you like this. Now, let me ask you Does God forgive sins or sin? Sin. Huh? Sin. Sin, sin. Sins. Sins. So, sins. So what the difference between sins. sins and sins? Sins. Sin for Jesus no, 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 no. is that he has forgiven all the sin of humanity. Somebody's phone is uh, on. Yeah. So. Okay. So okay. Sin is ah. the root by which you rebel against God. Mm. And sins is because of the power of rebellion, you, you are followed with your action. So even if God has to forgive us of our sins and does not deal with sin, I will still go and commit sins. Mm. So what did God do? He took our sin nature and put it into Jesus who knew no sin. Oh, so... In this prayer which we make, uh, Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world, right? Yes, 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 yes. Not sins. Uh, sin. Yeah. So, the Lamb of God takes away the sin nature, the rebellious nature from man uh, because he's the one who took it into him. Uh, and instead of sin nature, he gives us God's nature which is called the righteousness of God. Hmm. So, uh, so now we pray for the sins. Uh, sins. What do we pray for? We, we pray for forgiveness of sins. Sins, yeah. Because sin but is... As, as we are born again, ah. we do not have the sin nature in our spirit. Yeah. We have God's nature in our spirit and that's why we are called as new creation. Hmm. So when but, we, when we but, are... but our soul, our soul has learned many things in our old nature and that's why the corruption is in the soul, not in the spirit. Mm. So when we pray, we should pray to forgive our sins, not the sins. Sin. Yeah, sins, not sin. Yeah, correct. Oh, now I got this uh, understanding. So sin is the root which you rebel against God and 
sins is the fruit of the rebellion yeah so if i do not have the sin nature hmm. i can never commit its sins but i can be tempted by the enemy to get into sin hmm. i can be tempted by the enemy to get into get sin. into get into sin that's what happened in the garden of eden so the enemy's way of tempting me is to give me a lie saying that it is the truth but now it is now that cannot happen no now jesus has already become the sin yeah but now he, he uh, jesus has paid the price and given us the god nature that is righteousness but yet the devil will deceive us by giving us the lies with a soul because a, a, a one third part of mankind is already been dealt and made into god kind of life that is those who are born again that is why a person who is born again can understand the spiritual things the person who is not born again can never understand spiritual things did you get that no i did not i didn't understand this one third when you what is said okay okay give me one thessalonians 523 Read, brother. May the may the God of peace Himself sanctify you entirely. Yeah. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, did he say your spirit and body, or he says your spirit and soul and body? Yes, spirit and soul and body. So man has got how many parts now? Three. Praise God. Praise so God. where where is the sin nature? Sin nature is in the soul. No, sin nature is in the spirit. Okay. So when a person gets born again, he gets born again where? Soul or body? In in uh, he gets born again in that spirit. No, no. Spirit. 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 Yeah. And raising me. In the Hello, spirit. Hello, he gets born again in the spirit. Yeah. In the Hello, spirit. he gets born again in the spirit. Okay. Yeah. Answer is right. So when he got born again in the spirit, when he goes for a retreat and comes back and he says Hallelujah, praise the Lord, he is born again. Okay. Yeah. Now when he is born again in the spirit, but has his soul changed? No. No. Has his body changed? No. So now what is the journey? now the journey is to feed the word of god to your spirit and make your spirit so strong that it has control and dominion over your soul because when your spirit was corrupted your soul was trained to live a selfish life hmm. have you ever committed a sin yeah every time you have committed a sin remember one thing you have committed a sin the root cause of every sin is selfishness the day yourself is crucified there is no sin hmm. so your whole journey now is to teach your your soul okay the word of god which you have planted in your heart hmm. so the more and more you feed yourself with the word and ask the holy spirit to teach you your soul gets renewed day by day hmm so how do you know your life is getting transformed the proportion to which your soul has got changed aligning to the word of god your life has been transformed hmm and and the mind is in your soul uh, yeah your mind is in your soul your senses are in your soul your will power is in your soul your consciousness is in your soul so what's in the spirit faith is in your spirit so the soul operates on physical senses the spirit operates on spiritual senses yeah they are both operating system are different hmm so it is your battle now is not to fight the enemy outside the hmm. battle now is to fight yourself 
mm. who is relying on physical senses which contradicts the word of god yeah yeah so when you are saying that i will greatly rejoice in the lord the reason you are saying is because the salvation is what the physical blessings mm. is your inner garment mm. but your outer garment is the gift of righteousness mm. because now you got the gift of righteousness you want to live a life of righteousness before god mm. in faith mm. because you got a new nature yeah even if you give the best bath for the pig he will still go and sit in a mug yeah. why that is his nature so we were born like that but now through christ we are born with a new nature we look at the dog how, he, how is he full of love yeah yes so your life is full of love now which kind of love selfless love mm. now this is what happens when a person goes for confession okay not only his relationship is restored his relationship of righteousness is now having dominion over his life and soul is submissive to his spirit mm. that's why the person is able to get that passion to study the word that's why the person has got the passion to be selfless that's why the person is having the passion to become uncomfortable to comfort others yeah so you are not doing the good works because you want to do you are doing the good works because according to the bible in ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 god has changed your sin nature to god's nature look at that ephesians 2 8 is it now making more sense yes so is it only the ministry of reconciliation you go and your life will be changed not at all look yeah. what he says for, for by grace you have been saved through faith so do you agree you are saved by grace of god brother yes no do yeah you believe that you are saved through faith brother through faith yes by grace so i asked you two questions which one do you agree are you saved by grace are you saved by faith saved by faith saved so you are saved by faith both both you need saved both. By both both you got lot of your advocates are standing up for you now jos <laughs> you need and grace God, they have and come faith. to you yes grace and faith jos after all these meetings somebody has stepped out to help you yes after so many weeks of bashing <laughs> yes. we have to mix we have to mix our faith with grace so so it is both you are saved by spirit light on you are saved by grace through faith now this salvation is your doing or god's doing god's doing so is it your gift is it by your hard work or is it a gift of god gift of god that's why what is the ninth verse saying not the results of works that so that no one may boast so now if i'm preaching the word of god can i boast no so I, i'm having a healing ministry can i boast no i am having a deliverance ministry can i boast no so is there any boasting in my christian life no why not look at the 10th verse he'll give you the answer why for we are what he has made us created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared we are created in christ jesus you 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 missed it yeah we created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand to be our way of life so am i doing good works because i want to do or i am doing good works because i have been recreated in christ jesus I've been recreated in Christ Jesus. So now have I got the new nature? Yes. Have I got the new ability? Yes. Have I got the new capacity? Yes. But but who is my enemy? The devil. 
my self is my enemy. Oh. So my self is listening to every suggestion of the devil. Uh. Because my self is operating in the physical world uh. and my spirit is operating in the spiritual world. Okay. So my spirit is operating what the word of God says. My soul is operating what the world is saying. Okay. So now my battle is even though I confess my sin, unless I renew my mind teaching my soul the word of God day and night, day and night, day and night, when I keep on teaching my soul, my soul is getting more and more purer and purer and purer. What is the proof? My obedience to the word of God is becoming more and more and more, more and more and more. And the more I obey the word of God, the more my life has become pure. My life has got transformed. And now I'm living a victorious life. I'm a blessing to the nations. And even though I can see all these doings that are happening, none of them are mine. I can take ownership of it. The owner is the Lord himself. Yeah, so you uh, mentioned about self. Uh, now, who controls the self? You control or the devil controls the self? No, my spirit has to control myself. No, because in the last week when we discussed this, you said every cause of this sin or every, yeah, every wrong action you said it is the... Uh, self. No, it is the devil you said. Yeah, the, de the devil is... Uh, see, the devil can tempt you. Okay. But the devil cannot force you. Mm. See, God has given man the freedom to choose. Mm. So the devil forces you to choose. Mm. God will never force you. Mm. So the moment you made that choice, now you are in the devil's hand. Mm. Now you became the devil's slave. But if you disobeyed the devil and did not give him any room, but you fought against him using your faith, the devil has lost you. Mm. That is why the Bible says that be strong in the Lord and do not give in to the wiles of the devil. Do not give him any room to stand. So the devil is a liar. He will every day come and discover new lies in your life. Mm. But the moment you give in to those lies, that now you are on a journey of death. Yeah. We learned that seven steps of temptation. You remember? Yes. It all starts with the thought. Yeah. So where does the enemy take you for a ride? In your thought. So the enemy now that, thought. Okay, that thought are of two kinds. One is a godly thought, one is an ungodly thought. Mm. Which thought are you entertaining? Yeah. So when you give into an ungodly thought, the ungodly thought starts multiplying at a high speed, mm. leading into an ungodly action. Mm. So when the when in Isaiah he says, "I will greatly rejoice in the Lord," is because I cannot clothe myself with the garment of salvation because I don't have the power. So by my confessing, by my repenting, God forgives me and blesses me with the garment of salvation is the blessing. Mm. But he's saying much more than the blessing is the gift of righteousness. Because even if you have got the garment of salvation and you don't have forgiveness, you are still going to hell. Forgiveness? If you don't have the forgiveness? Forgiveness of... Uh, I did not understand If that. you don't have forgiveness of sin from the Lord, ah. that sin in your life is qualifying you to go to hell. So that is why that we... is why God's God's word says his anger is for a moment, but his mercy endures forever. So are we to say okay I will probably park my question later. I'll park my question last later. So what is the meaning of park your question? I will not ask right now. So you will have good sleep tonight? 
No, no, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know whether I would be asking this question and uh, you've already answered in this, which I have not. No, no, I, I, I won't say anything, brother. I promise you. No, I still am not able to understand when you are in the garment of uh, salvation, how can you go to hell when you are already wearing the garment of salvation? No, no, you see, the rope of righteousness is what qualifies you to be free from uh, hell. So then what is the use of garment of salvation? So that's what we, we are all the time praying for blessings. Hmm. Okay. The, the rope of righteousness is your sin nature. Okay. Yeah. If God doesn't deal with that sin nature, what will, how long will you carry the garment of salvation? So which means the garment of salvation is something which everybody has. Is that what you're saying? Respect. Everybody has got even the gift of righteousness, no? The robe of righteousness is only once you build... build no, I, no, no, the moment you got born again, the moment you got born again, yeah. that born again itself, you got the rope of righteousness. Yes. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. Why am I rejoicing? See, am I rejoicing because I got blessed or am I rejoicing because I got forgiven? Oh, okay. So you are saying that righteousness... Uh, See, there is a level, no? Different levels, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. See, if, let's say, you got blessed, but you did not get forgiven. Yeah. Now, who is, who is torturing you day and night? Yeah, the blessing is torturing me. <laughs> the, the devil is torturing you. Yeah. Can you enjoy the blessing? No. But the moment you got forgiveness from sin, mm. now how, how do you feel? Yeah. See... Brother, honestly, all this time we were living in Bangalore, pollution, pollution, pollution. Okay. But when you see a COVID patient, what is the level of pollution? His lungs cannot pump in oxygen. Mm. Now, do you can you see the effect of unhealthy lungs? Yeah. In the same way, when you are standing before the Lord mm. on the judgment day, you will understand what important is the rope of righteousness and what important was the garment of salvation. Hmm. Yeah. Because our treasures are the things of the earth. Hmm. God treasures are the things of heaven. Yeah. So if you are a person who is born again, your mind is on a heavenly treasures not the treasures of the earth. Yeah. Correct. And where do we get into worry? Treasures of the earth or treasures of heaven? Treasures of earth. So if your desires are for the low things and you are skipping the high things, then you will be in... You are created for high things. Mm -hmm. And you are... You are uh, your desire is all the low things. Yeah. So it's a mismatch with your new nature. Yeah. Correct. So this new nature, I got it with my sweating or I got it as a gift? Gift. Under the law, can any human being, the whole human race, under the law, can he ever be, and can he ever become righteous in the eyes of God? No. Because God's standard is so high, no human being can ever qualify to become righteous. Yeah. And imagine, God gives you that gift and declares you righteous. Yeah. Imagine that, now that you are righteous, God declares you that once upon a time you were a sinner, destined to go to hell, God has cancelled that and now adopted you in the family of God. Mm. If you get adopted in a family, who owns this earth? What, what what will be your thinking now? Earth belongs to him. Yeah. When a car belongs to us, we are looking at the color like this. When my father owns the, the earth, what, the whole galaxy, what should be your joy? Yeah. Did I put too much pressure on you? You're not even smiling. No, no, oh, no. Is, is it is it going like a wiring? Yeah, Trrr, yeah. All, yes, huh? yes, it is going like a wiring. Oh, is my anointing of sleep come on you? 
<laughs> no, no, I got, I, I can't sleep like that. But uh, today I'm trying to, I think I'm processing too much. So is it the boxing punches were too much? No, not with you, but since morning I've been really working hard today. <laughs> so you're not blaming me, no? No, 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 absolutely no. I stopped blaming, brother. I am in the, I am wearing the garment of <laughs> a robe. Righteousness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this. Uh... Brother, brother, you know why I am sharing this? A person who has done all his life blunders. Yeah. Okay. And he comes to church for the first time. Okay. And when he comes and he listens to the teaching hmm. and there the preacher is saying, you don't have to do anything. The father is the one who will put the makeup on you. Hmm. That is uh, that has to sink into it. That is not what we've been taught to us. No, see, we've been taught that we have to do, we have to do kind of thing. That is un yeah. that if we have to do, you will never qualify. See, that is right. But unlearning has to happen, no, brother. That is where the you know process is going on. So that's why it's difficult. Not difficult, it is still slow to, it's like some tube light, you know, sometimes it takes that little time to, <laughs> you know, light in its full capacity. But I'll tell you, but I'll tell you, if you sit with the Holy Spirit and tell you, Correct. and sit with Isaiah 61 and 10, ah. okay, you will experience the moment the Lord begins to explain to you how it is, you will begin to experience your own life, how miserable it was. And after coming to the Lord, even though you are disqualified, yet God has blessed you with so many good things. Yeah. Why I am sitting on this chair and enjoying every moment? Because I know from where I have come. Yeah. If a person has come from the most corrupted place hmm. with total corruption and then he got cleaned up. Now see, a mechanic is wearing his clothes. Yeah. And one fine day, the mechanic is clothed with pure white clothes. Mm. Imagine what will be happening. He will never even think of wearing a white shirt and pant. Mm. A mechanic. Yes. So now he has been clothed with white without one stain on it. Yes. So all his life, what was he wearing? He has a dirty clothes. Dirty clothes. Now he has been given brand new white clothes. Now what will happen to him? Yeah. Even while sitting somewhere, no, he'll put a handkerchief and sit down. <laughs> but otherwise, what was he sitting? How was he sitting? Now that is what has happened to me. Yeah. So when you have come from that country to this country, now you are breathing oxygen, and you are not only breathing. When you are opening your mouth and speaking, the God who Creator, He comes and confirms what you are speaking, man. Who am I that you should listen to me? Yeah. Do I qualify that you should listen to me? No. Now, the, now three days back, a Hindu man is coming. Mm. Okay. He's from Punjab. Mm. His daughter has been sent home because the doctor says we cannot do any more treatment. You'll mm. be wasting your money and all that. So from three days he's coming and three days I'm teaching him mantras in Hindi. Mm. And that fellow and his wife is doing it. Mm. In three days, Everything has begun to change. The baby is eating food. Appetite has changed. The stools are coming out. Everything is improving. Now, who am I that God should answer my prayer like that? Yeah, yeah. That is what today I was sharing with my with our group. You know, one thing which I read, read heard about, uh, uh, you know, Thomas uh, Aquinas after after he one day after he said the mass. He was sobbing. So his fellow priest asked, what happened to you? Why are you crying? He said, uh, you know, when I prayed, let, when during the mass we pray, you know, the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit come upon the, you know, bread and... Uh, so if, when I say the Holy Spirit comes, means how, how much, you know, how loving Who God. am I? Who am I? Who am I? What is my identity? What is my identity? God should listen to me. God should listen to me. I call and the Holy Spirit. That, that, that is where, that is where you sit and cry. 
Yeah. Who am I that God, the creator, should listen to me and come and yeah. do it because I told him to do? Yeah, that's it. So there's a very, uh, very, very uh, high level uh, thinking. In my mind, it is just, you know, it is sometimes going over my head. So you mean to say all that I was teaching was going over your head? No, no, no. It is not all. I am just... Uh, <laughs> So, Jude Fernandez is writing down all the notes. So, I am now, you know, referring to those notes. Oh, uh, he's, he's putting it on the chat, the answers, huh? No, 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 no. Chat he's not putting. Chat I can't uh, look, brother, because too many chats sometimes comes. I will lose concentration. Then he will ask me what some question I will I will not be able to answer. <laughs> that is what I will tell people to refrain from sending too many chats. Because I get distracted. <laughs> anyway, so, so... So, today's homework, today's homework, brother. Yeah. Isaiah 6110. Yes. Okay, okay. Listen, listen, listen. When you have... This is what the Lord taught me. Uh, when you are wearing the rope of righteousness, okay? Uh, from, one bin, from one window, an arrow comes. When you are unguarded. And comes to hit you. And says, you did this and this and this. Now, when the arrow comes, the arrow cannot penetrate the rope of righteousness. Mm. Because this rope of righteousness is covered by the blood of Jesus. Remember in the Garden of Eden, God clothed them with animal skin? Yeah. So, when you peel the skin, along with the skin, there is blood of the animal. Yeah. So, that clothing of animal skin covered sin for one year. Okay. Now, when we have the rope of righteousness, our sins are covered up, are not covered up, our sins are erased completely for eternity. So now, whichever bullet the devil is firing, the rope of righteousness doesn't allow it to penetrate. Yeah. So now, which one will you be rejoicing? For the rope of righteousness or for the salvation? No, I, I definitely, uh, Rob, uh, brother, now these days, one of the things which we were discussing in the group, this uh, first, uh, you know, re reading the word or speaking the word loudly, one of the biggest benefit that I have seen is it is attacking, it is captivating the thoughts that are coming. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is the biggest benefit that I have received in this Bible study. Otherwise, I used to entertain these thoughts and get into, you know, different mood swings. Now, the thoughts are captivated, you know, which is like uh, crushing it and just, it, as you rightly said, it is, you know, it's not penetra penetrating. Yeah. So, now with, the, now with the rope of righteousness, yeah. you understand, yeah. you are wearing an invisible rope and you're walking boldly. And even if there are demons all around and they are manifesting, you are not scared because you got a rope of righteousness. Yeah. How do you think when you step into Africa uh, and everywhere, all these say, you are covered with the rope of righteousness. Yeah. That truth that you understand yeah. is your confidence. Yes. So your confidence is not on who you are. Yeah. Your confidence is on who you are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Correct. Uh, brother, There's I have one. difference between the two. Yeah, Chennai Jude. Uh, yes, brother. I have one question. I have yeah, read yeah. about uh, some saints who have been physically assaulted by demons. Saint Padre Pio, uh, Saint Gemma, and Galgani. They were physically assaulted by demons. So yeah, uh, they were physically assaulted by uh, uh, demons. But what was their capacity to withstand? Was it yeah. their own strength or was it their God's strength? In fact, uh, Padre Pio was uh, bedridden for a few days after the attack. Okay, now let me ask you one thing. Before Jesus started his deliverance ministry or his public ministry, was he taken by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted? Yes. Now, the Bible is saying to be tempted. Yes. Why? Because the battle has to come. Hmm. And in that battle, he came back victorious. Now, when he came back, is it saying he came back just like that? Or he came back with power? Yeah, with power. So, every time the devil attacks you, okay, you are also fighting back with faith. 
Okay. Now, when you're fighting back with faith and you get that victory in the spiritual realm, after that you come and preach. See, the whole congregation is changed. Absolutely. In fact, uh, this very beautiful... So, when we get the hit, it mm. doesn't mean we are immune to Satan's attack. Mm. But one thing is real truth is Satan will not be able to kill us. Mm. Now, you mean to say Paul did not go through afflictions? Mm. Yes, yes. But did the afflictions had a hold on Paul? He was rejoicing. He, he was not only rejoicing, he had victory in every affliction. But what happened in his spiritual realm? Did he destroy the kingdom of darkness? Yes. So, the battle in the spiritual is, if Satan had not crucified Jesus, would Jesus win? No. no Jesus so, the battle begins when he comes and touches you. That time the whole of heaven backs you up and Satan is, who has come against you, is defeated. Now when you come back with that victory and you start preaching, the whole congregation is converted. Hmm. Jude, I would recommend you watch this movie, Ignatius of Loyola. He, okay. That's a beautiful scene in that movie after Ignatius of Loyola becoming a, you know, he converted and uh, you know, he started leading a life. There is a moment in his life where he was so much tempted. He goes into a cave and there he's tempted to such an extent he was about to commit suicide. He was about to come, jump from the, you know, cliff and commit to end his life. But that was a test which he is going through. And when he, fi when he finished that test, you know, then he become more, more powerful and comes out and... Uh, now, now Elijah... Okay, yeah, like he faced it. the prophets. Yeah. But the moment Jezebel spoke to him, what happened? Yeah. He got scared. He got scared. <laughs> but, 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 but did God leave him? No. no. God asked him, what are you doing here? <laughs> you should have been there. He's saying, he's pleading to God and saying, God, kill me. I don't want to live anymore. <laughs> Are? Just now you fought the prophets, man. You called <laughs> fire from heaven. So, so, our spiritual life is not straight like a line. It is always a life of pressure. Mm. Okay. So the enemy is going to come and strike you anyway. Mm. But the question is, have you been feeding your spirit every day mm. so that when he comes to attack you, you are already uh, pumped in the power that you need to face it. That's why in spiritual life, you cannot be constant. You'll go up and suddenly you will have a dip. Then go up. Now, when you have a dip, the question is, at that time, did you give in to? Or you fought back? Mm -hmm. And if you fought back, then you don't come back with the same level. Your mm -hmm. level is now Much gone on the next level. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, brothers. Praise the Lord. Today, 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 it looks like uh, Joe's. You have been punched so much no, that no. you look to be. No, when no, you I started, thought... when I... you started the class, you were so fresh. I was in that state. Ah, yeah, you were like a punch today. I was, I had a very hectic day today. That is, uh, that is why there are a problem. So let mm. us uh, pray. Let us close. Thank you, Father, with the, uh, for the beautiful day, the beautiful insights that you've given to us. Lord, thank you for the homework that you've given to us in Isaiah 61.10. Lord, we pray pray together that give. thank you for giving us the understanding of Isaiah 61.10 to know what it means to be wearing the robe, Lord. Lord, we wanted to, we, uh, we uh, thank you, Lord, for you making us all walk like vic victorious people, Lord Jesus defeating the enemy in every area of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the wisdom to understand your plan for us and making us walk in your, in your path. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, the brothers. Problem, and the, the problem is, you know, my sleeping time is ah. that this is the night time, no? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Early morning. So, so I'm working on the whole aim. Yeah. So that old him, you no, know, the body somewhere in the, I think the geographical location 
has got something to do with it. Yeah. So during the AM time, no, that sleep somehow starts creeping in. Even if you still like, come on, I don't want to sleep, it's still yeah. creeping. So sometimes I'm so tempted to shake the computer to wake you up. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. but uh, anyways, no problem, brother. So we will but, see. But, but even even in that train going like this, in between. Yeah. But by the end of the class, we have got something to learn, na. Correct, correct. Yes, brother. Yes. So can yes. you see? Can you see even in my sleep how much I'm depending on the Lord? Yes. Yes. Maybe you can walk and you walk and you can do like the way you did in Dubai. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, if you are give me that permission, I, that will be way better because when I walk, I don't sleep. Correct. Yeah, yeah. You, when you sit in one place, we'll try yeah. it out. We'll try. And, and what happens? And what happens from the participants if there is a discussion? No, my sleep will go. Mm, yeah. Mm. If there's no discussion, then it becomes like I have to only speak. No, then yeah. I have to trigger Joe's to ask some questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, brother. God bless you. Thank you. See you. God bless. Bye bye. I, I I hope Sharu is not getting annoyed with me. No, 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 no. no. She's uh, huh? no, no. Absolutely. Not. I I'll get, I'll call her and ask her. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> okay then. Bye. 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 God bye. Bless. bye.